Hi, I'm Prepper Mark, and this is part two of my survival pack video. So last video we left off on the clothing, so now we're going to get into the personal hygiene here. Oh, I forgot a couple items of the clothing. Well, one item you can classify it, clothing. That's the Dry Ducks Dora Light 3 rain suit. Now, you're going to need a rain suit because you're going to run in the rain. If it's cold out and it's raining and you get wet, good chance you get hypothermia, hypothermia or just plain freeze. So, with this rain suit, it's light, it's less than two pounds, it packs up in a small size pack, there you see, and it'll keep you dry. Now, it's not the most durable. It will hold its own, it has good reviews, but it's not going to last you a lifetime of rough wearing. No how, no way. Alright, now with my other hygiene, well, I have a microfiber towel there. And the reason I went with a microfiber towel is it absorbs more water and dries quicker. So, that's a plus for me, plus a washcloth. And then I have two bars of soap there. And I went with soap because soap's lighter weight, it'll last longer in body wash, so we're going with soap. Then I have a whole tube of toothpaste. Now, if I was just going out for three days, I take a little tube of toothpaste. But since I'm going out for the rest of my life the way I'm thinking now, I took a big tube of toothpaste because I don't know if I ever ever see a tube of toothpaste again, so we'll make that last. Then naturally, I got my anti per yeah, deodorant. That word just ain't coming out. It's late tonight. My words ain't coming out. Then I have my toilet paper there. Plus I got some more I didn't put up there. And then I got an antibacteria hand cleaning towel there. I got several of those. And then I have my MSR water filter here. Now, where I'm going at, you can dip the cup right in the stream and drink the water right out of the stream. It's going to be that good. Only problem is you never know what's upstream. Now I had a friend that went out hiking and he was thirsty. He dipped his cup in the stream and uh, this about the time he started to swallow he seen a dead deer laying up above him there in the stream and the water tasted nasty but it all hit this the same time he was swallowing. Well, about a week later, he started peeing brown stuff out, and he got deadly ill. He had to go to the hospital for about a week, and uh, here he had some sort of hepatitis. I'm not sure what it was, B or C, but what happened was that deer ended up in the stream somehow and died, and it was just rotting away, and as the water splashed over that deer, all that was coming down the stream, and he wasn't that far down where it didn't get diluted enough to be safe. So, wherever you're at, you know, unless you right at the water source where it's coming right out of the ground, I would suggest always using the water filter. So, alright, next I have my water bottles there and my CSI cup, I believe it's called. Now, my water bottles are both quart bottles, and my cup, I think, holds like 18 ounces. Now, the nice thing about that stainless steel cup is you can use it for a pot, you can use it for a bowl, I can use it to cook on my little stove there. So, it has several uses that will come in handy. And next, we'll go to my fire making kit here. Let's zoom in there a little bit. Now, there... Uh, this thing just ain't working. There, I'll point stuff out. I have a magnifying glass. I have matches and a waterproof pouch. I have a Coleman refillable uh, windproof lighter. I have a bottle of propane here. Not propane, but butane to fill that lighter and the lighter I wear around my neck when I'm out in the wilderness. I have two Bic lighters there, one wrap, one not. That way if I fall in the stream, I got a dry lighter to light a fire with. And then I have my magnesium fire starter there. So that's my fire kit. So that should last for a while and I shouldn't have any problem making any fires of any kind. Now, 
Here I have two fuel bottles. They're 20, they hold 22 ounces of either Coleman white gas or unleaded gasoline, and that's for my Apex cook stove here, my little stove. Now, the reason I'm taking a little backpacking stove like this is if you get in a rainy period where all your wood's soaking wet and you can't make a fire with it, I have something here to cook with. And also, if uh, you're in the wilderness area and it's middle of summer, you're going through somewhat of a drought, everything's really hot, really dry, the last thing you want to do is build a campfire to cook on and then have wind blow through there, blow them embers and start the forest on fire. You definitely do not want to start a forest fire. So that's why I went with that. And then I have some paper towels there. And then here I have a spatula, a big cooking spoon, a set of plastic silverware, and a aluminum plate. Then I have a two quart MRS MRS uh, pot with a lid that doubles as a frying pan. Now here I have my medical kit. Now I'm lacking that department. I gotta put some more stuff in there. But also I have cotton balls in there and petroleum jelly to help build a fire. But uh, you need stuff to close a room, like something to stitch your wound up with. You know, super glue they have now for wounds, and you just need to have enough stuff in your first aid kit to cover anything you can do by yourself, whether it be stitching up room, wounds, uh, putting a splint on your arm for say anything that you can do on your own all right now we'll get to my knife collection here now this is a Gerber AR 3.0 I have two of these one I'll carry with me all the time one's a spare in case I lose the one I carry with me or I break it and I like the small knives for skinning small animals, gutting fish, uh, peeling an apple if you're lucky enough to find an apple tree, carving fine details and stuff. Like I said, I'm going to make a bed hopefully. So I might need that to carve some smaller stuff for my bed. Who knows? But I like a smaller knife for that. And then here I got my uh, Swiss Army knife. Now that's a Swiss champ there. It has several attachments. It has pliers, a toothpick, a fowl, a fish scaler, a pair of scissors, a straight pen, can opener, bottle opener, corkscrew. I mean that thing has it all. Mini magnifying glass. And then next I have my Leatherman. Now that's a Charge ALX. Now this is nice because it has a lot of different features to it. It has pliers and knives, uh, fowls, stuff like that. But one thing nice about Leatherman, this, this, there's like three or four of them that come with a bit set here. Now there's this one of these that come with this knife. Then there's an optional kit with two of these that you can buy. So I bought the optional kit and then I took the three of these, picked out the bits that I thought I used the most and made two like this and that way they fit in the pouch there with uh, the Leatherman so that's a nice feature have. Also I carry an extra hunting knife just in case something would happen. Now this is my Buck Special 19. Now that knife I had for a long time and it's still like new. Now the good reputation, good solid quality knife. And that knife costs anywhere from around $33 to $50 depending on where you buy it. So for that price you can't beat it. And like I said, I think I had that for 20 years now, 25 years to be honest with you. Them things came out in the early 80s and back then they were $39.95 when they first came out and today they're about the same price. Now let's move this over here. And see where we're at. Now I have a Gerber Sport Axe here. That's about 14 inches long. I'm going to be using that to make shelter with and cut fire with, wood with, and whatever else comes along. 
And then there's my pride and joy, my Ontario Saulback Machete. Now, I love my machete. I can do anything with that machete. I can cut down small trees, cut off branches, clear brush. That machete just works great for everything. So I, I'm all hipped on my machete. Well, now, sorry about this, but zoom in here a little bit closer. Then I have a walkie talkie there so I can scan the channel, see what's going on, maybe that way. If, Anybody else has one in the area, um, the airwaves are working. Then I have a pair of small binoculars there, that way I scan the mountainside, scan the, scan the area around me or where I'm headed to. So that's something I want. Now here you can't see it too good the way it's laying on thing, but that's a Princeton Tech Apex headlamp. Now I love this headlamp. I had this headlamp for about five years. I think it's 200 lumens. It has uh, four LEDs and then it has one, I forget the name, Krypton ball or bulb, ball, but it's really a bright straight line beam light. So that's nice. Then I have the mini mag light or mag light mini pro LED. That's 226 lumens. I did a video on that thing. That light is super bright. Downside batteries only last for like two and a half hours, but I love it because it really lights up everything. So I'm, I'm out traveling in the woods at night. I like to have it lit up if I can. Now, if I'm in a place where I need to keep a low pro profile, then I won't use that light. But if I'm hiking out in the mountains, I want to be able to light up the trail and see where I'm going. Now next is a railback indestructible light. Now this is also a double A light and it rubber, has rubber on both ends so you can drop it without a problem. You're not going to have anything break. I think it's drop tested at 40 feet. It's not waterproof but it is water resistant. But it's like has two beams there, a high and low beam. The high beam is like 100 lumens. Low beam I think is 20 lumens. I'm not sure. So that makes the battery last a little bit longer. I'm not sure the battery length. I think on high is like 10 hours. On low might be 40 hours, 50 hours. I'm not sure. But that is the light I'm going to use around camp when I don't need a super bright light. Now here I got my double A batteries. Here I only got 12 batteries. I got vacuum seal, some more batteries. But I'm going to take 32 batteries with me all together. All my equipment's battery operated, take double A batteries, so that'll work and that'll last me for a while. Then I have my fishing kit here. I have fishing line on the bottom there and I have hooks and split shots on top. Now if I'm gonna go fishing, it isn't hard to find natural bait where I'm going at. Just roll over a log, get a grub worm or get a worm, get some crickets anything like that so I don't have to worry about bait I can find natural bait there here I have a set of ski goggles now I stumbled onto these by a bad experience too I was out hunting one year the wind was blowing like 30 40 miles an hour and it was snowing really bad so I couldn't see anything my back was towards the wind I mean if a deer would have went by he could walk two feet away from me I would have never seen it and if that would have lasted all day, I would have had a heck of a time finding my way out of the woods in that blizzard. So after that, I bought these. I keep them in my pack. You get in a snowy situation like that, I can see they're tinted. So if you're in a real snowy area, you don't have to worry about getting snow blind. You just put these on. Now, if you live in a desert somewhere where you're going to get sandstorms, dust storms, I would suggest buying a pair of these with clear lenses or maybe lenses that are tinted for the sun. This way you have eye protection against the sand, flying sand, because that can really sting and hurt and it can do serious damage to your eyes. Next I have a pair of work gloves. Now I highly recommend getting a pair of work gloves. Simple fact is if you're building the shelter getting firewood and you're ripping and tearing at logs and sticks and everything else and hacking away it's going to be real easy to cut your fingers so if you cut your fingers and do it bad enough you're going to need stitches or 
it gets infected you're gonna need antibiotics so you just can't run down to the local emergency room and get stitches or get an antibiotic or anything like that you're on your own so you need to wear these they give you great protection then over here I have a pair of Cirrus all-weather gloves now these gloves are waterproof and they're good for about 40 degrees I'd say to keep your hands warm then next to it I have maps of the state of Pennsylvania and every forest in the state of Pennsylvania this way I know where I'm going when I'm out hiking in the mountains looking for uh, whatever supplies or whatever if I'm in a bug out location and it's compromised and I have to find a new location these maps have all the hiking trails all the dirt roads all the streams they have everything for the state of Pennsylvania here so that I can plan a course how to get from eight point A to point B and if something blocks my way I can figure out an alternate course so get maps of all the wilderness areas in your state so you can do the same thing now next I have vegetable seeds like I said I'm planning on planting a garden wherever I'm bugging out to because you can't live off this wild game and fish you need to have a garden and then here I have my snorkel set now this is great for just relaxing I can jump in the creek or river and go swimming and enjoy life or I can search the bottom to find something I may be able to use or I can use it to spear fish whatever this is something I take with me then I have my dew wrap now my dew wrap is nice in early fall and spring it keeps my head warm I more or less use it to keep my head warm and in the summertime I'll keep the sun off my head <clears throat> plus I can spray bug spray on it keep the bugs from getting on me and I won't have to spray the bug spray on my skin now here I have my clavula I believe it's called now this is nice this is the ultra so it's nice and warm and waterproof and you can wear it three ways you can put it on your head just like you see there and use a face mask or you can pull the face mask down just use the hood and the neck part or you can pull everything down just use the neck part around your neck and this covers most of your face except around your eyes and all you need is put your ski goggles on and that covers your eyes so you can cover your whole face so if you're in extreme cold weather and wind and snow you can be well protected now let me go over a few items that I missed the first time through here and one is my toothbrush zoom in here now this is a low folding toothbrush now this is something you don't want to forget I mean it's kind of ridiculous to take a big tube of toothpaste and forget your toothbrush but mine's right there another thing I want to go over is my campfire grill now this is 10 inches wide 15 inches long it has legs where it sits right down on the fire you can use this to put pots and pans on the cook with or just throw your meat or fish right on the grill itself and cook with so that's something I forgot on the first way through and uh, a few other things that I have and I don't have here one is going to be food now I I'm taking freeze-dried food with me and I'm taking about a five to ten day supply of freeze-dried food as much as I can fit into my pack plan is 10 days but I'm gonna re do some new stuff in my pack so hopefully I can fit 10 days supply in and basically with that I'm not gonna use that right away I'm gonna put that off and I'm gonna try and hunt and fish and eat that way and use the freeze-dried food as a last resort so I don't starve and that way I'll have it in case of emergency say somewhere down the road I can't catch any fish I don't find any game I can kill I can fall back on the freeze-dried food other thing is a knife sharpener now I have one I just don't have it out here you want a knife sharpener so you can keep your knives nice and sharp so you they're good to go when you need them uh, another thing is snare wires now I'm in the process of redoing my snare wires so they're gonna go on here and another thing is a gun cleaning kit I'm in the process of redoing my gun cleaning kit that's why you don't see it here and that's a must you want to keep your guns good and clean 
good and old and good working shape. You don't want them to get all rusty inside or outside so everything works fine. Uh, another thing is bug spray. Now my bug spray, I gotta get a new can of that. I just gave mine to my son. He's on his way down to Florida. He just moved down there so I need to replace that. Uh, sunscreen. If you're fared skin or you're not used to being out in the sun all the time or if you're in somewhere where the sun's constantly gonna beat down on you you need to put sunscreen in your pack too. Uh, another thing I don't have uh, I'm seriously thinking about buying is a can of bear spray. Now the reason for bear spray is if I run into somebody on the trail I just can't have my gun pointed at it ain't gonna be very neighborly but every now and then you're gonna run into somebody on the trail if it hits the fan probably that's gonna want what you have so if by some case he ends up getting me to surrender all my weapons to him and stuff like that I can use the bear spray probably won't be expecting to be attacked by bear spray I'll have that strap right on the strap of my pack there and I'll sure shoot him in the face with the bear spray and try and regain my weapons back and take control of the situation again. So that's something I want to add in there too. Ah, uh, let's see. I can't think of anything else. I think that about covers it all. Uh, also, now my pack, when all said and done, is going to come in about 75 pounds total weight. Now, you may say that's a lot of weight, but when you're bugging out and you're never coming back you need to take as much gear as you possibly can take with you so you can survive as long as possible now the way the backpacking standards go it backpacks you usually put 25 to 30 percent of your weight in a backpack I weigh 210 pounds so my weight should be 70 pounds basically at the most so I'm only going to be like 5 pounds over. Now if your wife's gone with you, don't expect her to carry 75 pounds. They say she's 120 pounds and she her pack should be no more than 40 pounds. Now if she can't carry 40 pounds, don't make her. Just put in there what she can carry. You know, now she can carry 75 pounds too. What a woman, you know. Good luck. But don't make her carry more than what she can carry. And just like children, I know when I used to go backpacking with my kids when they were younger, I started them off slowly. They were six years old, I might have made them carry this their sleeping bag in their backpack. And as they got older, I added a few more things. Maybe put a set of clothes in for them, they get a little older, put their food in there. You get the picture, just start them off with a minimal amount of weight. As they get older, add a little bit more weight to it so you don't kill them on the trail either and then you'll have to maybe cut back on some of the stuff you like to carry with you and take their stuff in your pack well I think that's about it I want to thank everybody for watching and hopefully this gives you some ideas and helps you out in some way and I know for each person in each region the stuff you put in your pack is going to be different but some of it no matter what the region or what the person is, some of it is this common stuff you put in. But I want to thank everybody for watching and God bless.